I got yeah. to know Del Rey pretty well because we were on a trip that we no longer have anymore called President's Quest, um, but it was the top eight rising businesses at the time. It was a cruise with the Coovers, and she was with her mom, and I was with my sister, and we just had the best time. But to get to know her heart, who she is as a mom, why she's so passionate about this business, you know, where she is in the health and wellness industry, her work ethic, her tenacity, her fun. You know, we were like riding bikes all around Barcelona. She just has such a special place in my heart forever. We always call each other like cruise sisters. So um, Del Rey, I promise you, you'll be out of here. You guys, she's got a little one that she's got to go to bed, but I would love for you to just first like tell your story. There's some veterans here that know you. And there's some people that are like, who's Dr. Del Rey? And like, how do we have a doctor on this call that let's just get them, um, let them get to know you. Yeah, absolutely. It's so happy to be here. I want to make this a candid conversation. So if you have questions, type them in the chat, I'd be happy to answer authenticity is my passion and having like real conversations. I feel like my life was extremely uncertain, like the world world feels today when I was first introduced to isogenics. Um, I was a chiropractor, super passionate about health and wellness, but was really stuck in a business model that stole all my time from my older daughter. I was a young mom at 21. And so she was raised by daycare and I just had a lot of guilt and it was heavier and heavier year after year. So I had a good idea to pivot from the chiropractic office brick and mortar business and start my own weight loss um, and nutrition business online. So I decided, you know, I'm going to cut out the middleman and manufacture my own products. I want to formulate my own products. It's going to be so amazing. And then I feel like I unveiled the curtain of Oz in the manufacturing industry. Um, it is a highly unregulated industry. And I always joke that I should be on Dateline, like literally sharing with people what is in your kids' vitamins that you buy off the shelf to protein powders. So when I came across Isogenics, I was impressed by the quality and purity of the product, but very, very skeptical about the business model. Um, I had to overcome a lot of limiting beliefs around network marketing, and I had been approached in all the wrong ways. So I was extremely resistant to even exploring the opportunity, but it was one woman who found me really at the right time. I was in a really tough place. And at that time, I was not as vulnerable as I am now. I put on the mask that everything was fine, um, and it wasn't. I was um, in a really tough relationship, unhealthy relationship. Um, I was drowning in that other business, investing so much time and money into the business that now I had no time again for now, not only my older daughter, but also a little one who was around 10 months at the time that I was introduced to Isogenics. And I um, decided that it was at least worth a conversation. And that's what I was asked, like, you know, worst case, like this isn't for you and it may not be a fit. And I just felt really relieved by that, that somebody was willing to say this might not be a fit for you. I was like, okay, thank you for just like admitting that and not trying to convince me that it was. And there were just a couple of questions that like, honestly hit me right in the heart. Um, one was, you know, if you didn't have to be doing the day-to-day -day in your business, tell me what your day would look like and, and who, or what is most meaningful to you, you know, how would you be spending your time? And I was crying within 30 seconds because I knew that my greatest role that I wanted to be the best at was a mom. And I like could not find a business to allow me to feel like I was a present mom. And I had guilt about that. Like I always knew I wanted a career. I just, and I was passionate about that. My mom was an incredible stay at home mom of four kids and it's what she chose and she freaking rocked it. Absolutely amazing. But I knew deep down at a young age, I just had this ambition that work was a pathway for me that gave me a lot of purpose and meaning in my life, but I, I was constantly feeling guilty. So when I had, I would say the, the conversation that really opened me up that this vehicle and, and company could give me time flexibility, number one, um, that was exciting for me to be able to take a look. And then I was exhausted. <laughs> I was so stressed out. I was barely sleeping. Um, and I needed more energy and mental clarity. And it was post baby. So I just wasn't like bouncing back. I was an athlete. So I was like ready to rock it way faster. And um, then I was, and I will tell you the products in the first 30 days, I really noticed an incredible difference. And they have been nourishing and fueling my body for nine and a half. No, yeah, nine years now, over nine years now. Um, and it really, again, just opened up my mind to what was possible because I knew there were a lot of health professionals specifically that felt how I did, especially female health professionals. 
And I think that was also my first clue that depending on what your story is and what your pain points are, you just, you don't have to build like anyone else, you know, what feels authentic to you and who you desire to serve is the most important component. And usually that comes from your own pain or your own experience where you start to understand the gaps in people's lives. And that just becomes a really authentic place to build from. I love that. You guys, I mean, I always say when people go with this company for so long, I mean, Jess is someone, Delray is someone, I have someone, I mean, a lot of us are five plus years. And I say, what is one product that I have used consistently for that long? Like the only thing, honestly, and I think about this all the time is Lululemon. Like I'm not loyal to mascara. I'm not loyal to like the type of car that I drive. Like some people, like once they get like into Mercedes, they only drive that or whatever, you know what I mean? Like I love Elise because I change it all the time. And you hear people say like, I've been doing this for nine years. Like, like I have not drank the same wine. I've not used the same type of pants, the same type of shoot, like anything. Like, and I, to think about people are using isogenics for a decade, like that is so, so, so noteworthy. So I love that you kind of bring that up. Um, you guys, uh, I love that Del Rey can just literally do anything because we kind of went back and forth. She's like, just interview me. And so I'm just going to kind of go with what yes. comes up. But one of the very first things that I want to start with this, I don't want to end with it. Um, without going into the, any details, you have seen adversity in this business. Like if anybody knows anything of her story and her organization, you know, there have been wall kicking moments. I would love for you to just kind of share like how you persevered, what you had to do, like to be mentally steely to stick that out, why you've been committed to this company, to your team. Um, I think that that real and rawness is so inspiring to so many people. Yeah. I mean, I cannot say this has been easy in any capacity. And I would say, especially emotionally, it's been extremely challenging to continue to choose resilience and to look at it with that perspective and, and build, I, I just say it, you build more capacity. Like at the end of the day, every challenge you go through, you build more capacity. But I think one of the lessons I've learned, not only in this business, but I do believe that this business taught me it faster. And um, it taught me that the foundation of fulfillment in life is understanding more of who you are and what values you stand upon. And for me, knowing my values and knowing that healthy relationships, we know proven with science is what actually builds a, a happy and fulfilled life. So I look at everything as a partnership and I look at relationships in that way. And I'm very choosy when it comes to relationships because I've made a lot of mistakes in the past and I learned from them. And now I trust myself to be able to choose always healthy relationships and navigate around, you know, ones that aren't. And those are really hard lessons to learn. But what I always come back to is the relationship that I have with isogenics continues to align with my values. And my values are, you know, family and integrity and impact. And I know they're, they're deeply rooted. And it, it, I look around and I look at, you know, how many opportunities are thrown your way and just a lot of the hype that happens um, you know, and and cultures that really struggle with uncertainty and and when doubts, when seeds of doubt are sown, it gives so much opportunity for drama and gossip and stories and all of these things to arise. And I really choose to kind of like stay in a little bubble of my own and say, you know, I know myself well enough to know I want I want to navigate through those and still choose this partnership. And it, it I would say the the greatest reward that I've experienced through all of those challenging um, experiences I've had in network marketing is that I am still choosing a path that puts my family first. And um, you know I believe that there's ups and downs to everything, and I'm not a hype person, um, which is why I know that there's hard to every business. And I've experienced a lot of business models that are um, hard in their own ways, but none of them have given me an opportunity to actually have seasons and experience seasons that have been very challenging with my family um, and actually being able to be there and still be rewarded for the work that I did um, a while ago. And I will tell you, being an, an achiever and starting to actually shift that identity and starting to understand that I don't need validation or recognition. I don't need to stand in front of a massive crowd on a stage to feel, you know, seen. I feel really seen um, in like my nuclear family right now. It's just the season that I'm in. Like I love 
raising my girls and being a present mom. I love volunteering. I'm on three nonprofit boards and none of that would be possible without isogenics. One of the most gratifying experiences I had just recently was volunteering for my daughter's fifth grade basketball team, believe it or not. Um, I got to use the Harvard curriculum that I um, completed in executive business and leadership and utilize that for these fifth grade girls that are going through way more challenges than we've ever experienced when we were younger. And, you know, I just realized that wouldn't have been possible without isogenics. And I did nutrition curriculum and we made protein energy balls. And yes, moms bought protein, but more importantly, it was such a natural environment. So that's another clue. Maybe we'll talk about connecting, but like know yourself and be unapologetic about that. And the more that you shine in your authenticity, no matter what is thrown your way and you know, you'll be able to overcome it. And I choose resilience. Like that is a, like, I think a, a superpower of mine um, because I grew up on a farm and like, that's the only choice you really have uh, when you grow up that way. Um, and I believe there are beautiful gifts on the other side of pain. I've always believed that. Love that. I hope that you can see like the notes uh, chat blowing up here because Erica, Holly, there's some girls just kind of eating this up. So I was going to ask you a little bit and I want you to just uh, maybe merge this all into one based on what you said about the connecting piece, but talk about that, where you meet people, how you meet people, how that feels organic, you know, um, how you've consistently been meeting and enrolling people, you know, for nine plus years. But I was going to also ask you how you've been so successful with B2B, business to business, you know, that you are working in salons, you're working in other health, you know, practitioners offices, other gyms, and not that you have to build a business that way. A lot of us, you know, connect with other mom friends and, you know, our, our best friends or college roommates or whatever it may be, but just your experience. Um, if you can talk about both of those, that'd be great. Yeah, I think uh, another superpower is like immersing myself in environments where I have common ground, where it is, I mean, natural common ground. I used to say I'm not a craft mom, even though there's like perler melty beads right here. And we were just doing that. I am now. But you, when I first started this business, you would have never found me in a Hobby Lobby. <laughs> so I, I really find my little pockets of people that I have something in common with so that the conversation is really natural. And I also feel that being born with a gift of curiosity, like insatiable curiosity and genuine interest in others' well-being is one of the most powerful tools that you have for connecting. I don't have something in the back of my mind as an agenda to be able to convince someone is is for them right now in their life. I, I don't. I just feel like the more people you come in contact with that know you're a bright light in the world, especially right now. Um, and I, I don't know if you've ever read the book, Go Giver. It really shifted the way that I looked at everything. It was how can I give and serve on a day-to-day -day basis? And you never know when it comes back around. And that's what I truly teach my girls. Like be a go giver, figure out how you can help people. Um, figure out what their needs are. And you do that by listening more and asking more questions. I think a lot of people think that they need to know the perfect script in order to go into a business or the perfect script in order to connect with someone. And yes, it's helpful to have guidelines, um, but most importantly, you, connecting with another human, it, it comes down again to communication skills and relationship building. And this business is absolutely a relationship business. I've always treated it like that from day one. Um, and the people that do this business with me have been re relationships of trust uh, for decades. So, you know, if you're new to that, um, it's never too late to get started. And one of the things that I believe this business teaches you is a skill set that you can take in every area of your life, uh, many skill sets. And I think we focus a lot on outcome instead of the process and instead of the skills that you build, it would be really tough to have a daughter on the B team, which by the way, I love because all the parents are super cool and no one's like pressuring their kids like crazy and being, you know, psychopaths on, on the court, like the A team. So I actually really enjoyed the B team experience. And one of the things that I noticed is that the outcome was never what their goal was with these group of fifth grade girls. It was it was practice and daily habits and development of skills. And if we would have been pressuring them to win every game and make every basket, I mean, I literally celebrated one of the girls on the team who shot for the first time and got a basket like it was the Super Bowl. It was ridiculous. And they got it on video. And it's because celebrating those small wins is what it's all about. It's not about 
the big achievement. It's about who you become by actually overcoming all of those small milestones along the way. And then I learned a lot from my daughter because she wasn't, she's not competitive like I am. And she just looked at me and she goes, mom, my top core value is fun. So if it's not fun, I'm not doing it. And I was like, I have a lot to learn from you because I took life and business way too seriously for far too long. And if you're not somewhat enjoying the process, it, it's just, it's going to be painful. And that's, you know, it, what kind of process do you want? What kind of feedback? Like growth really drives me. So being uncomfortable is actually like a dance to me and I enjoy it. But that started at a young age. And, you know, I did a lot of really uncomfortable things like standing at a mall kiosk for chiropractic, literally for eight hours a day on a Saturday and Sunday and asking people if they wanted to get their spine checked. 200 people would say no, 20 people would say yes, and two would come in the office. And like those numbers are really equivalent to network marketing. So rejection was never something that I took personally. It was, a, oh, they're just not ready right now. And what did I learn from that conversation? How can I improve my communication skills? And if I could almost compress what I learned in those conversations, it was people don't have an opportunity anymore to actually look into someone's eyes that is empathetic about what they're going through or like to even take a moment to connect with someone. I mean, people are on devices, they're on their phones, they are pulled in 50 directions. I had a really tough season with a close family member going through a cancer diagnosis and treatment. I had two girls with severe anxiety, the older one at college with an awful, horrific, mean girl, first year roommate experience. And the little one with a traumatic experience with night terrors waking up. And through all of that, I had one friend that felt like a village to me. Like no matter what, she did not try to give me advice. She didn't give me feedback. She didn't try to fix it. She just listened. Like she literally gave space to me to be able to cry, to be able to be vulnerable about what I was going through, to be able to ask for help. And I think that gift is actually what's missing in our world today. We live in an epidemic of loneliness and human connection is now like literally a lifeline. And I take that very seriously. Mental health is extremely important to me. I just lost one of my best friends, a chiropractor to suicide a month ago. Like it's, it's serious. We talked once a week. I had no idea what was going on. And the reason I go there and I go deep is because that's who I am. One, if you learn one of my values, like we're not having conversations about the weather, it's going to be something way deeper than that. And you don't have to go there the first time you talk to someone, but I will tell you when you operate that way and when you feel safe to people, because people know if you have an agenda, when you feel safe, people come to you like a magnet. And that takes a lot of personal work because it takes work on overcoming insecurity. It takes work on overcoming again. Yes, you can have that. Can you open it? <laughs> Someone is asking for a little treat because we were watching Caitlin Clark in the basketball game. Oh gosh, honey. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Thank you. Uh -huh. So, you know, I do feel like now more than ever, I am into connecting with moms and I'm just like so real and like, it's so hard to do it all. Like it's actually so hard to do it all and to actually feel like you're good at all of it. And I do feel like that whole thing where you can like that saying you can have it all is BS. Cause I do feel like something gives, like there is priorities that you have to have. And isogenics like gave me the gift of priority when I needed it the most for my family. It's like, whoa. And, you know, look at my numbers, look at my growth and all those things. They're not where they were. I'm just going to be super transparent. I'm not going to, I'm not the top, top income earner that I was, but like my worth and my value isn't attached to that anymore. And like it was, and I don't feel like I'm any more valid of a leader or a human if I needed to actually utilize what we've been told is the gift in this business. And often like we apologize for that. So I don't, I fully embrace it. And that's just the candid part of who I am. I believe in seasons and I do believe you can come back with just the most amount of energy and intention and drive and ambition from a place of like, I called it my 
cocoon, like my motherhood cocoon. And it's made me even more grateful for isogenics. Um, and again, the fueling of my body with this nutrition to be able to cope in a, in a positive, healthy way is incredible. Well, you know, I always appreciate depth and vulnerability and none of the rah-rah rah, hype stuff. I mean, anyone that knows Jess and I is like, we're all about, you know, excitement and enthusiasm, but transparency is huge. And the things that you've shared about the seasons, about, you know, the, the growth, the motivation, the resiliency, you know, how you meet people playing in your lane. I love, 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 love it all. Um, with, you know, everywhere you've been in this company, with everything you know in health and wellness, why is Isogenic still your home company? Like why this, you know, I know you get sought out for other companies. I know you've looked at them. I know you were approached by other companies beforehand. Like why is this your only network marketing company? I think it's the, again, the values, it always comes down to that. And I love the products. I use them daily. Like, I don't know how else I would, it, it's just, I do. I'm, I'm, I am that like product of the product. So, you know, for me, that authenticity just shines through. And again, it's in a conversation. I've taken some time off of social media as well, just for my own, again, mental health. And um, I, I use them in a, such an authentic way that it does start those conversations on a day-to-day -day basis. So, um, everything evolves with time. That's something else that I've learned is closing chapters is really hard. So understanding the identity shift that the company made, you know, when the Coovers left, like it's hard. It was almost like a grieving process for me, to be honest, um, and it was not easy to like fully accept, like we're turning this page now and it's a new chapter, but I think all of us can agree that change is hard and change is scary. And, um, usually it's not met with just like excitement and certainty. There's a little bit of uncertainty every time that happens. But what I've realized is we've always overcome that. And I love a good freaking underdog story. Let me tell you, like I do, I love underdog stories where people question and integrity always shines through. So I'm kind of driven by that because I've always been the underdog. I was never naturally talented at anything. My first track race I ran, I got lapped twice by the first place runner. And my dad was like, you were awesome. And I was like, I was terrible. People were leaving the stadium. Did you see that? And he's like, all I see is a state champion. You know, so I do think that if you have vision and you can see through those ups and downs and, and challenges, again, hype doesn't get me ever because I just know what's behind it. So I don't, nothing like that is ever enticing to me. I like that steady, strong-willed, like persistence. And I feel like Isogenic still has that. You guys, if you feel like you have strong-willed persis persistence, put a favorite emoji in the chat or up on your screen. I just want to see everyone get lit up right now that you have like strong and Oh, I love it, Erica. I was like waiting for the emoji, but she was typing. Let's see some fun, fun, fun emojis here. Okay, I have one question for you, and then I'm going to do like quick rapid fire questions yeah, and then awesome. let you go, and then you guys stay on for just a minute. Uh, ooh, like nice sunglasses. Just is feeling spring break. Okay, um, if you could go back and tell your younger self anything when you first got started with isogenics, what would you tell yourself? Um, work on I, I work on your insecurity, like yourself first, because the foundation has to be there in order to lead others like self-awareness and self-regulation um i think the component of mindfulness through yoga and meditation has completely changed my nervous system i am no longer a stressed achiever that will burn out with another like 90 day action plan <laughs> like face plan after i'm done um it is just I love my emotional home now. Like it feels so beautiful. And like my girls love that emotional home. You know, they are so safe there. And a, an incredible, beautiful partner of nearly eight years has given me that gift of full acceptance. So the sooner you accept all of you, like I could not accept for the longest time mistakes that I had made in the past or the guilt and shame that it is in there and you cannot lead others until you fully accept yourself. So, so, so good. Okay. If you had a brand new person, you know, joining you today that really saw the vision, that really saw the opportunity and was like, okay, I want to be, you know, doing this full time alongside of you. What would be your best tips to onboard them? Like what would be your action items? Because they follow systems and then just watch for action. <laughs> what would you tell them to do? 
Um, I mean, I love isogenicsbusiness.com, like using all of the tools, the roadmap to executive. Um, I love the who do you know list and just really getting into conversations. And I love in-person connections and events. So again, hosting something small for them to be able to invite people that feel super natural to them, where they can watch the process and, and learn from it and duplicate it. Oh my gosh. I love that you just said that. Cause when you are off, that's, um, you just teed up a little bit. I was going to say, so y'all don't get off. Um, in my last 90 seconds, what's your absolute favorite product? Can't go without it. Oh my gosh. That's so hard, honestly. <laughs> um, cause I, I do, I love so many. Um, I do love the tri-release protein. <laughs> Ooh, you guys, that's a rare one. I'm not, we always get Ionics or eShots or whatever. Um, okay. Top, uh, three products then. Okay. Try release. I mean, collagen is incredible. And of course, I mean, Ionics is still an OG for me. I, I love it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Ionics is such an OG for me. Best personal development book, not including the go-giver because you already talked about it. Ah, okay. That's also so I've read so many, um, personal development. Ugh. I mean, I read Think and Grow Rich at such a young age and it just completely changed my mindset, um, like success principles, uh, but how to win friends and influence people, because I just bought that for both of my daughters. They have like a teen version and a younger version, and we're reading it together. And again, it's all about the gift of giving to others first. And that is influence. Love that. You guys, that's a really, really, really good book for anyone who kind of has this, like, I'm afraid to sell. Like, I don't want to be a salesperson. Like, that's a really, 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 really good book. Okay. If you can just close this out with one word, one final sentence, one, anything on your heart, you have the stage. And then you guys don't go anywhere. <laughs> I, I just feel like at a time when the world needs transformational leaders the most, uh, responsibility keeps coming up for me. Like it's a word and a value that keeps coming up. It, it feels different than obligation because obligation is easy to just not do, but responsibility just feels like a nurturing value for the world. And I believe you start in your home, you first, and then you start in your home, you start in your community and that just spreads, like never underestimate the power of kindness. I have my girls pick out their values every morning and the little one shares with me at the end of the day how she lived out that value in action. So we storytell around that value. And there's little things with role modeling. You know, we put together little isogenics bags and a little note for homeless people in our community. So when we're driving by and someone's there, like sometimes just being seen as a human right now is the greatest gift. So don't forget the power of like the little things. And I know that doesn't have anything to do with this business, but those, those action steps accumulate. And when you are a leader, you're paving the way for that same, you know, value and, and action to be role modeled. So this is a call to action. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I love that. Okay. As promised, go put your little Thank girl to bed. Thank you guys for being on here. You guys put some fun chats emoji. Love for Delray. Let her go put her quote munchkin to bed. Um, and you <laughs> guys right. stay on so good for to just see a all minutes. of you. Bye, sweetie. Good night. Bye. Good night. You have so many different time zones and trying to accommodate around kids' schedules. Like literally um, for so many years, people were like, you do your, your team call right at bedtime. And I thought our team calls at seven o'clock. Like who goes to bed at seven o'clock? And I always thought like the East Coast was like, they should be going to bedtime. No, I totally get it now. Like my, did, my dude is down by 7 p.m. And if I had to keep him up, no one wants to be around. That's like a full meltdown. So um, I get it. And I'm so grateful we can have her on. Um, I want to go quickly through recognition in the team announcements. But before I do that, and because she already teed it up a little bit, I really want to chat with you guys about events, okay? Um, I so, 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 so powerfully, um, Stephanie and Tristan from Canada said, um, I know they said it at Top Achievers. I know that they said it at one of the incentive trips in uh, Costa Rica. I think that's where you guys went. Um, they said it on that Top 100 call, but they um, are in such growth right now, like such, such massive momentum. And it was like, people said, what are you doing? It said, everything you guys stopped doing. And if I were to tell you what Isogenics looked like when I joined, there were events daily for sure weekly but there was like super saturdays all over there were in homes all the time there was nothing virtual like the idea of having like an online tasting like forget about it right and this was happening and then with the pandemic we pivoted yeah, and don't make me yawn 
that was your fault. <laughs> it's already hard enough for me not to. But anyways, and so then, you know, people wanted to do things online or were trying to do things, you know, at home again and blah, 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 blah. And it is like Del, Del Rey just said, people want the, the connection. People are finally at that point that like Zoom is not enough. They want to be in people's homes. They want to see the pets. They want to give each other hugs. Then I want to, first of all, encourage you guys to host your own. If you have not had a launch party, if you have not done a tasting, if you have not done some type of event that you hosted, like in the last three months, the last, you know, 30 days, you need to do one, right? And whether you're doing a vendor fair, you're doing a college and a cocktail in your house, you go do a mommy play date and get a few women together and say, I want to share with you what I'm up to. It doesn't have to be grandiose, but it is incredible. And I will tell you, my husband even said to me to me the other day, because he heard me talking about it. He goes, so when are you going to do an event? And I was starting to come up with the excuses. I'm like, well, Adonis has the bedtime. He's like, we have a clubhouse, you know? He's like, I can take him on a Saturday afternoon. Like, I mean, like Ryan's creating the space because we know how powerful these are. And in addition to our in-home homes, corporate and the leaders are starting to do stuff again. So right now, to my knowledge, Jessica, if you know something different than what I do, there's two, two, two big events that I seriously want to drive every single person to. And then I'm going to list some of the smaller ones that I know about. The very first one is the first week in June. That is in Kansas City. Hillary Courtney and some really, really amazing top leaders are all putting this on. And David Wood is going to be there. So if you guys don't know who David Wood is and that he's back and he's building with us, it's incredible. I've already seen the changes that have happened in like the last couple of weeks by like rebranding our sales team as like field development. Like that's just such a real appropriate uh, term. So if you guys have never been to an event with David Wood, someone who has put some words in the chat, but he is the epitome of fun, integrity. I mean, our culture, like he oozes possibility and vision. And I think about looking back at UIAs and just different events that David was at when he was the keynote speaker at NYKO and who he is to this company that if you have not seen him, you deserve to be there, but you want to get your people there. He is the type of person that will take any skeptic to the next message of next millionaire. You know, he teaches you how to speak. He teaches you how to present. He teaches you how to share your story that 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 should be a non-negotiable. A lot of people are talking about celebration. You guys, that's in September. We are March. That is so many months away that if you enroll someone today and it was like, okay, how do we get them going? You don't want to wait until September for them to see the community, for them to really see the belief, for them to learn the systems and be corporately trained. Now, do I think that you need to be promoting celebration? Yes. And if you're even like a iota committed to this business, it's a non-negotiable. Any other career that you um, had a conference for, like you wouldn't be like, oh, I kind of want to go or I kind of don't want to go, right? So yes, there are a lot of reasons that keep us from going from events, right? That was me last year. You guys, I was 38 weeks pregnant. I'm sorry, I did not go, right? That was the only time I've ever missed celebration in now 10 and a half years. This would be my 11th year and going. So if there is something absolutely, you know, catastrophic that you can't go. Otherwise, put it on your calendar, buy the flight, get the hotel room and start getting people there. Now, in addition to those events, there are super Saturdays popping up everywhere. I just saw the one in New Jersey in our chats here. Uh, Cindy Walters and Lynn Hagedorn are doing an event in Louisville. There's stuff in Texas. If you go to isogenicsevents.com and look at the associate run events, you will see things all over the nation, but it is time to start showing up and it's time to start bringing your people. Now you have heard for a long, long time, isogenics was steady and then we were down and then we were momentum and then we had this and blah, 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 all the stories. Okay. At the end of the day, we have this amazing company. We have incredible, incredible products. We have a compensation plan that's unparalleled, a community that is unmatched, but it is time for us to get our boots on the ground and get back into massive action, right? If we want this company to flourish, if we want to be the underdog story, like Del Rey said, if you want to see hundreds and hundreds and thousands of people on stage of six figures and beyond, like we have seen in the past, stop watching stop talking, stop wishing and start doing. Okay. And I'm telling you that, that Jess is starting to do events. I'm back to doing events. You know, there's so many people on this call that it is huge. Yes. I love that we use social media. We can message people. We can do reels. People will reach out to us. It is not the same of getting five builders at the same time in a room and them dreaming big together. It is not the same at an event in 10 product users wanting to do their 30 day together, all enrolling in an isobody challenge together, holding each other in, in, um, accountable. So my homework to you, my challenge, to you, my wish for you, my expectation, my accountability, whatever words you want to use, book an event that you are the host of in the month of April. Okay. I didn't say the month of March. I'm giving you more than seven days, but you now have 40 days to book one event that you are the host of. 
that you either your brand new builder, your brand new customer that you say, hey, will you do a, you know, charcuterie and cocktail, you know, collagen event, or will you do a healthy happy hour? I'll host it with you or invite all your new people. That counts, right? Whatever it is, you have a month to do your own. You also have 90 days to get to an event that you are not hosting, that you're bringing people to that is uh, led by top leaders or corporate supported, like a super Saturday that other people can see this big vision, that they can plug into the culture, that they can get trained by the best of the best of the best. So if you are willing to one, host an event in the next 40 days and two, get your people to an upcoming super Saturday, get a celebration ticket, get them to Kansas city, get them to Louisville, get them to New Jersey. I want you to put an 11 in the chat. Okay. One for one for each. All right. And then we're going to circle back. And I want us to just be like talking about it on our calls. Like, Hey, I did this event. Hey, I'm going to this event. Hey, I did this event and understanding that that is the power we built from events to events, to events, to events. If you guys have never heard the statistic by Eric Ori, each person who gets to an event will grow your business by a thousand dollars for the year. So if you get 10 people there, that's a $10,000 raise. If you get, you know, 50 people there, that's a $5,000 raise. Okay. Or 50, $50,000 raise. Like it is so, so, so important to get your people to events. That being said, we've got just a few little announcements. Welcome abroad challenge, not home, right? We're going to the Bahamas. It ends on Sunday. The points are updated as of the 19th. So take a peek where you are. And even though there are some people listed there, remember you have to meet the requirements of the two a month, you know, different points are being paid as executives. So it's not set in stone and anybody still is eligible for this. The anniversary sale ends tonight. You guys, we're going to get off the call. We have two hours left to really, really drive this, do some follow-ups, send some links up, get some people to save, save some money. And the team builder bonus, you guys, if you have not watched the videos on that, um, Tata's executives, this blows my mind. They're going to earn commissions for two years after a customer purchases. Like what in the world have you ever imagined that you're going to earn for two years? That's 730 days. Like, are you kidding me? Like there's never been a reason more than right now to get back to paid as executive. So if you need help finding 10 friends that all know two people that have skin or eat food, reach out to us. Let's get you there. Let's get everybody earning in that. You guys, thank you. Give Delray some love. Send her a message. Thank her for being on the call. Um, 